Welcome back to Chicago Archery's. I started doing that again. Chicago Archery's to the point. I'm Bob. I'm the owner of Chicago Archery and uh, your podcast here today. Uh, today, I am going to start it off thanking Wings of Severance, man, for that awesome, uh, awesome opening. You couldn't ask for a cooler group of guys, man. Um, that thing just rocks. <laughs> and uh, my buddy Rick for putting together that opening. Always got to give props to the people that do things for you, man. You got to do what you got to do. And not everybody's an expert at everything, you know, so get, get friends to help you. All right. So this is Chicago Archery's To The Point podcast. And you can also see us on YouTube at Chicago Archery to the Point, uh, sure, Chicago Archeries to the Point. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, um, but I will try to explain everything I can so you don't have to see the video. You can listen to this in your car on your way to work. I try to keep the podcast to about 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, so you, if you're in Chicago traffic, pretty much can maybe get you a couple blocks. <laughs> All right, so let's start out with if you got any questions, concerns, or quite, and if you can't come into the shop and you're from outside the shop, um, let's you can get us at the Gmail here, C A to the point at gmail.com. That's C A T O T H E P O I N T at Gmail. Dot com. All right, let's get started. All right, first and foremost, you guys know the rules, man. I'm not going to be plugging uh, manufacturers per se. I Sometimes I may mention a difference. Today, I'm going to definitely mention some manufacturers on some of the differences on how they tune. So today is about tuning your bow and arrow and getting ready for broadhead hunting season. And that's the reason why I don't have anybody else here today because... I'm pretty much everybody's bow tech that comes on this show. So I'm the guy you want to talk to. So when you come into the shop, I'm going to leave a couple ends open for uh, questions. So when you come into the shop, now remember, not everybody's bow is the same. Not everybody's bow tunes the same, which I will explain today. And um, uh, I'm a one man show here. So uh, if you see me screwing around with the computer and stuff, I'm trying to get it to, it's mostly about the podcast, not so much the video. So there will be some pictures that I'm going to show up on the, 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 uh, face or the, uh, YouTube, but, um, I'm going to explain them. So you don't have to go see the YouTube. It just does help uh, for some visuals, you know, if you want to refer back to it and then you can go through it. Uh, today is going to be a one subject pony um it's about setting up your bow and arrow um and getting it basically set up so when you start tuning in your broadheads your broadheads and your field tips go to the same point same spot we have a lot of um questions about that and people say just use mechanicals just remember some of the mechanicals are longer in the front end than a field tip so that does affect your arrow when you make your arrow longer all right. And we'll talk about arrow, a little bit about arrow cutting and stuff like that, because any subject that we're going to touch on here today is a whole subject in itself. When we talk about tuning and everything else, uh oh, crazy things are happening on the side here, there, the other way there, over my left shoulder. I don't know what the hell's going on. Oh, my green screen fell. <laughs> Very cool. So we got technical difficulties. Um, I may have to fix that. I don't know how I'm going to, but I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it for right now because that's what makes it cool. All right. So for those you can't see, uh, I'm having tef- technical difficulties already. And I expect the whole green screen to come down now because of that weights on there. So I may have to fix it later. All right. Let's start out with first and foremost, get your bow set. Get it. Make sure it's tuned up square level and plumb uh your third axis on your your site is taken care of um you want to make sure that if you're doing this work yourself and this is to help people that are doing this work to self that your field tip and your your arrow is directly behind that string 
Okay. And the way to do that is, is when you line up your rest and this, you touch your rest. Nowadays, we only touch our rest once and that's setting up the bow. You get it all square with the center of the cam because the center of the cam. And when I say the cam, the cam where the string is at. Okay. Not the center of between your limbs. And I say that because not all bows is the center of their string, the center of their riser or center of their limbs. All right. You can use a laser and find this out. Uh, some of the uh, um, lesser brands like, no, well, I'm not going to say what their name is, but like the bottom cam is way to the left and then the top cam might be in the center. So actually the string kind of crosses right at where the knock is at. So they're a little bit different. Okay. And we will talk about how we tune those. But uh, you want it basically center of the riser. Most, most bows now are center of the cam is center of the riser, center of the limbs. So they get even distribution. Okay. All right. So your bow's set up. It's square. It's level. Go sight it in. Get it in at 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 yards, 70 yards, however you want to shoot it. But get it sighted in. All right. Get used to your bow. Make sure everything's set and you got to have a good anchor. Now, after that... Okay. Once you got it basic sighted in, all right, you got to understand your form at this point, your grip, your form, your follow through, all of it has to be the best you can do. Okay. Because anything out of the ordinary is going to change the flight of your arrow. Okay. Remember the flight of the arrow is the reaction to your action. So we don't shoot arrows, we release them. So when you release it, if you flick it, bump it, grab it, a lot of times, as we discussed before, this is an unconscious step that starts as the release is going off. So it does affect the arrow, even though the arrow is only coming out at three thousandths of a second, three to six thousandths of a second. If you're grabbing your bow as you're pulling the trigger, which is an unconscious movement, but it's happening, you're moving that riser. And when you move the riser, you're moving the bow. Or you're moving the arrow. And when you move the arrow, things happen. And if your grip is not proper, then when you release the bow, it's going to settle in an improper way. And those grips are made for you to hold it. If you hold a relaxed hand, that bow stands straight up. And that's where you start. Okay. So let's start with that. Okay, so your bow's set, it's tuned, it's all good to go. I'm gonna check a little time here so we don't go over anything. We'll probably be less, this will probably be less than a lot of them. All right, not as much laughing unless I fall over my green screen falls down behind me. As you'll notice, the green screen is cool. For those of you in YouTube, man, the background is really cool now. All right, so anyways, it just has my logo in the background for those of you who can't watch the YouTube. And please don't do it while you're driving. And if you do, please don't do it while you're driving around me. <laughs> anyway, so you are going to start the next step is where we, I like for people to shoot through paper. Now I'm taking you through a step-by-step -step, the way you're going to do it. Now remember, and I'm going to, I'm going to diverse a lot, but uh, I, I want you to understand when you learn something on YouTube, or you learn something from somebody, you got to have a process in the way you do it. Okay. Otherwise, if you take a bow and set it up and then paper tune it and think you're set, it's not, that's not the way you do it. You got to get your bow set and you got to shoot it and have it sighted in, then paper tune it. Okay. There's many factors that affect that, especially by the way you're looking through the sight, getting things, you know, your anchor and everything. Okay. So, we're gonna to go to paper. And what I like to do is I like to do paper at like six to 10 feet with a bear shaft, okay? Now, if your arrow's cut properly, now it's cut anywhere from the edge of the riser, which some people like, uh, out to, you know, inch, two inches, out past it, all right? Now remember, the length of the arrow affects the spine. So when you're looking at your charts, if you're gonna cut your arrow longer than the front of your riser, because that's where a lot of people take their measurement, your, your, your arrow length is what determines your spine. Arrow length and poundage, but remember the arrow length. So if you're gonna cut 
a 32 inch arrow, then you have to get that spine for a 32 inch arrow at 70 pounds or 60 pounds or whatever you're using. Okay. If you change your poundage, you can potentially change the spine of your arrow. So now keep these in mind because when people get their bow and they come to me and we do the paper tune, which, you know, we get a paper tune set up and we get an arrow set up and it's running great. And then they go and say, Hey, you know what? I got three more pounds. I'm going to crank it up. Now it doesn't go through paper. Well, don't expect to come back and that I'm just going to do some magical fix. I just turn it back down. And it's going to be right back where it's at because that's what you tuned it to, right? That's what you tuned your arrow and your bow to, right? Sometimes a couple pounds does not going to matter, but more often than not, it's going to matter, okay? So get your bow set, poundage, set it up, then we paper tune, okay? Okay, so you shot it, you're ready to go. You got a bear shaft, you've got it set to the length where you want it, all right? Bam, run it through paper. Best shot you can. I like to tell them, do three. You could have three same exact results. All right? And if you're really concentrating on it, you will. You will have three same sort of results. Now, here's where we go into where you have right and left tears for spine. Okay. And they'll tell you right or left tear for a spine. Um, or move your rest. Don't move your rest. Do you understand? If your bow is set up properly nowadays, older bows are a little bit different, some of them, but if your bow is set up properly with the new stuff that we have out today, most of the bows are tunable without touching your rest because you want that arrow alignment proper. You're not going to compensate for anything. You're going to actually tune the bow. Okay, and the four major brands that I'm going to talk about today are Hoyt, Matthews, Bowtech, and Elite. Okay, those are the ones, obviously, I carry in my shop, and there's a reason for it. Okay, they're four very different bows, and they, it's great the way that technology of one changes and another one doesn't. One will go smaller, one will go longer, brace heights, blah, blah, blah. So we have a bow for everybody. Okay, but the tuning on them is is different. The concepts are pretty much the same, but the tuning is different. Okay, so you get a left or right tear. All right. At this point, you're going to tune the bow to the arrow. All right. If it's off a little bit, and let's say you cut your arrow long, and it says to tighten up your spine, you can cut an inch off that arrow. Let's say you went two inches long. You want a longer arrow to get it out farther. You can cut a little bit off that arrow. And I'd say about, you do inches, right? About an inch. And that'll change your spine a little bit. Okay. You can cut one. Now, remember, this is trial and error. If you're doing this stuff, don't expect anybody to pay for that arrow except for you. All right. If that's the way you want to do it. Now, the other way is, and with the four brands that I just mentioned, um, you can tune your bow by either moving shims or cranking. They have different adjustments for the cams. Okay. And I will explain the difference between the four brands. Okay. Now, if you're going to do a Hoy, like the new RX-5, okay, or the, um, the Ventum, okay, if you're going to do one of those, they have shim kits that the dealers have, and we have the tools to do them, right? So if you have to, what you're trying to do is you're, you're noticing like a tear right, which means like the tail end, the point is going through the hole, and then it like tears right, okay? So what you want to do is you can move that tail to the left, okay, by shimming the cams with a Hoyt. Okay, they have shims. You change the shims and it actually moves the cam one way or another and you're moving that cam and that's going to move the tail of that arrow. All right. And I'm going to get into something here in a little bit that's going to change your thought process. You think if you just move the cam to the left and that the tail of that string is or the string is going to move over to the left and the tail of that arrow is going to move left. That's not always true. 
Okay. And I'll get into that. Now with the Matthews, they have the hat system, which is a shim system, but it's actually, you pull the cam out and you move, you pull these shims out of the limb and you can change the thickness of that shim and you slide it back in. And then you put the cam back in and put the axle back through. So both of those, the Hoyt and the Matthews, you have to use a press. And some of you out there have a press and that's great. And you can get your shim kits from your dealers. Okay. And you can buy shim kits through us. All right. Um, and you can buy the tool for the Hoyt. You can buy all that stuff. That's not, if don't let a dealer, if you're not in my area, don't let a dealer tell you that that's not available because it is, we can sell them. All right. And it's perfectly, they put a price on it. We can sell it. All right. The other thing is the Matthews, they have the hat kits. You can buy a whole kit, different sizes, and you can change the up and lower and move that string around. Okay. And then there's the uh, Bowtech. Bowtech has um, a, what they call it's, well, it doesn't matter what they call it. It's a, it's a system where you unlock the locking screw and then you have an Allen screw and you can turn it clockwise or counterclockwise and it moves that cam right or left. All right. So if you're like, if you turn it counterclockwise, it moves it right. If you move it clockwise, it moves it left. Okay. Those are for the Bowtech owners. And that's a little tip for you. If it's counterclockwise, it's going to move it to the right. If it's clockwise, it's going to move it to the left. All right. So... That being said, um, we have one more, and that's the Elite. And the Elite has one where you loosen the lock nut, and then you turn a screw, and it actually has a sticker on it that says tail right or tail left. All right? So you get that set. All right? So now you've got um, – uh, oh, I want to go back into where just because you move it left or right. Don't forget you have cable um, – that's that little noise you're hearing. That's the damn fountain that the state or the, the city, the town of Wooddale made me put in that nobody uses. Okay. Nobody uses a water fountain anymore. Cost me a ton of money. Anyway. So the thing is you have cables, yokes and cables and uh Oh, I just lost my, just a second. All right. So I'm back. My camera went dead. Well, let's hope it doesn't have it again. All right. And so you have cables and yokes on, you know, cables, bus cables and on your bow. All right. So when you add pressure one way or another when you move your cam what happens is is that those cables tighten up also so it moves the bottom of the cam so if you move it like with a bow tech if you move it right what happens is it moves the left the bottom of the cam left because it adds tension because of the tension of the cables and yokes are pulling and pulling it over okay so it's it's not a big difference but you see it, that's how your string moves. So you can actually turn it and see that. Where the uh, Elite does it a little bit different. And then the uh, it's kind of the same way with the, the hats and shims with the Hoyt and the Matthews. So when you're going to do that, just make sure that you know which way you're going. Okay. So if you decide to do it on your own, um, that's a little helpful tip. So you're in and out of the press faster. Okay. All right, so now you have your bow paper tuned. All right, that's just a start. That doesn't mean everything's gonna fly perfect. All right, when you put your broadheads on, you gotta understand that the broadheads are gonna affect your arrow and the arrow flight. So you wanna get things dialed together. So this is where I talk about the, um, uh, the fine tune, okay? And this is where we're gonna get into a little bit and um, what you're going to do, and I'm going to show you some pictures here um, real quick. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to take that bare shaft. Okay. And let's see what we got here. Um, 
it's not doing it. Anyways, what you're going to do is you're going to take your bare shaft, okay? And you're going to, um, you're going to take your regular arrow that you use, okay? And you're going to, if I can get this to come up, you're going to shoot your arrow with your regular shaft, okay? And then you're going to take and uh, you're going to take and shoot your bear shaft. All right. So that being said, and I'm trying to pull this up on the screen so you can see what one looks like. Okay. So I'm going to share this on the, uh, I'm going to share this on the, uh, the YouTube, but I'm going to also explain it. So what it is, is I shot an arrow with a vein and it went in. It's a little bit out of the yellow, but it's right about there. What it, wherever it squeezed off, I just remember where it went off. And then I try to do the same with the other. And what happened with my bear shaft is it went to the left and a little low. Okay. Now, what I tell everybody to do is you start adjusting for your right and left. Let's get in the line. Okay. And then you can do your up and down. Your right and left, you're going to be doing with your cams. You're up and down. You can do a little bit with the knocking point, either with your D loop or your um, or with your rest. Now I, I know I said don't touch your rest, but sometimes your D loop is set for center burr hole, and you can move it a little bit higher or lower. But it's sometimes these micro adjust rests. It's just easier to go a couple clicks and it puts your arrows right next to each other. So it depends on the type of rest you have if you have a micro adjust. But up or down is not as much with the craziness of the arrow as a right or left. You don't want to move your rest right or left. Okay. So as the picture shows, it shows me just at a little bit, about 11 o'clock in the yellow, and then it shows uh, right about 7 o'clock in the blue um, at 20 yards. Now, you're shooting these arrows at 20 yards. Yes, you're shooting your bear shaft. So what they say is a bear shaft arrow with a field tip is very much like a broadhead, shooting your bow with a broadhead. Because, and that's when I say, I say with fixed fix blades because they're the hardest ones to tune in but uh, most of us or a lot of us really believe in the fixed blades all right so this is for all the fixed blade shooters all right um you can do this same type of tuning works well for anything okay for any type of broadhead you use but this helps tune your bow a little bit more minute okay okay so the first picture shows that all right the second picture I made a little bit of an adjustment, all right? So now it was left. So you, when you have something that's, um, if the bear shaft goes left, treat it like a right tear. If it goes right, treat it like a left tear, okay? So with this particular bow, I I shot another one. I made a, um, uh, an adjustment. And um, I treat it like a right tear, okay? So um, what I wanted to do is, you know, if it's a right tear, that means it's coming out the right. I wanted to get that. I wanted to move those cams over a little bit to the left, or I wanted to get that string string over to the left. I don't want to say cams because the cam movement's going to, different cam movements dictate where the string goes, okay? So I moved it over, and in the second picture, it shows me right in the yellow, and then just in the seven, eight on in the red ring. So I'm getting closer. But by doing that, the erraticacy of the shot brought them very close to the same level. The bear shaft is just a little bit lower. Okay. So it helped with just getting that string a little bit more behind that arrow. It helped it fly more straight, which took some of the erraticacy out of it. So it also did some of the elevation. That's why I say to do your right left first, because you'd be amazed. Okay. The last picture that I'm going to show is I'm in the middle of the yellow and I'm just touching the yellow with the bear shaft. And I made, I made another slight adjustment. Okay. 
and um, they're right underneath each other, right underneath. I mean, both of these, and this is at 20 yards, 60 feet, this bear shaft and this, um, this vein. And I just got the Q2I 2.1 veins on this arrow. It's on an FMJ, blah, blah, blah. You guys can, really doesn't matter you've, what arrow I'm using. It's, this is the tuning process. Okay. Now one's right below. So now all I have to do is either move my knocking point or my rest just a little bit. And I mean, a uh, 30 seconds is going to change that. Okay. Now I didn't do that on this particular one because I just wanted to take three shots and I, that's basically there's six shots three times and I just did it. Right. And I was running in and out getting the pictures. Okay. So that's what the pictures were. All right. So that's what you want to do. You want to get out there and then get it then, then start shooting your broadheads and you're going to find your broadheads and your field tips are right on. Okay. Now this is one method. There are other methods out there, but this is one that's been used for many, many years. It's easy for the general public to do. Okay. So now remember guys that have like the older bows with the yoke strings and stuff, you're just going to be moving the yokes. You're not going to be moving the cams or shimming them. So you just, yours is even easier. You know what I mean? And ones that don't have yokes or cams or nothing, you can do some shimming to it. But at that point, the bow wasn't made to do that. Okay. So you got to be careful with that stuff. All right. So now what do we do from here? All right. What do we do from here? So we get our bow, we get it set up and we shoot our broadheads. Everything's good. Okay. Shooting with your field tips, which it should. Okay. And you're using, you know, you got your broadhead and everything good. What do we do from here? Okay. The next step, and I'm not going to explain it because it's a whole nother show in itself is you torque tune your bow. I want you to torque tune your bow if you can. Now Paige Pierce has a YouTube video out on this. Okay. Anybody that knows Paige, she's just one of the top shooters in the world. And uh, she has a really good video on torque tuning and she uses a rest that's easy to torque tune. But basically what you're doing with torque tuning is you're moving your rest or your sight in or out to get it to a point to where you can add a little torque to your bow, left or right, you kind of squeeze it left or right, and that it still shoots the same spot. Okay, if you haven't done that, once you've done all this other, torque tuning is like icing on the cake. And once you have that, I mean, you and you have that in your armory, pff, your bow is indestructible, man. You, there ain't, you're going to be so confident with your bow. And confidence brings consistency, and consistency brings accuracy. And that's what it's all about. Those three. You got to be confident with your bow. And when your bow's tuned right and it's flying right, you're confident, which is going to make you more consistent because you feel good with your bow. You become one with it. And then that consistency brings accuracy. Okay. CCA. Man, I say it all the time. You hear me saying it all the time. CCA. Okay. So you're going to want to go through those steps. Like I said, look up pages. Um, look up pages, YouTube. It's pretty cool. I would say I would put a link below. But <laughs> I'm not that good with it, you know, in the YouTube. Oh, by the way, if you do watch my YouTube, which I know a lot of you have been listening to the podcast more than the YouTube, which is cool. Um, go and, you know, if you go to the YouTube subscribe, so I know you, you get the updates on these because I don't do them every week and I don't do them every two weeks. I just do them whenever I can, you know, and, uh, I do what I, I do what I can when I can, I'm trying to look at the camera by the way, but I got so much going on down here. I want to make sure I'm still on screen. All right. I normally I'm looking at another person, but I don't have anybody here. It's Labor Day weekend and I'm just doing this because I'm a nut job and that's I'm always at the shop. So all right. Wow. That's a good one. <laughs> all right. So the other thing is 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 you want to take your bow out and shoot it and get all your arrows and get everything set up. All right. Now remember if you change your veins. The longer the vein, the more drag, okay? The more helical, the more drag, all right? So be careful when you're doing 
when you're setting if just because if you send your arrow out there and you know you put your your broadhead on there all of a sudden the back end starts curling you know like doing a circle it means you got a lot of drag on the back end okay um lighten the load in the back end you know if you're running 100 um and then these guys with the crazy focs okay guys you're you're not going to be doing all this tuning you know with that crazy heavy arrows you can do it you can get your bows set up i set up the uh my buddy's hippo bow with really crazy heavy and we got really good paper but it runs really slow and we had to do some things with the veins and stuff to get it to you know fly just right um but once you set up a bow for those heavy focs that's what you got to use so make sure your field tip is an foc of that so that'll get you in the ballpark what i'm talking about here all right and if you're going to run those really big two blade flat um let me give you a tip um you're going to want to run a larger vein and control that thing okay because it's basically a wing on the front of your bow or on the front of your arrow okay um make sure you do that i'm not saying it's good or bad everybody has i mean they have their science for the kinetic energy and stuff like that um there's <laughs> there we all have our feelings about that you know and it did bring attention to the rest of the world with the high foc on the arrows that um you don't have to be go screaming fast to get good penetration so you guys that are under the speed game you know where are you going with it you know just make sure that if you're going for speed um it, you have to sacrifice something for something you're gonna if your arrow isn't flying just right and your bow is all tuned um you got to start looking at your arrow make sure the spine's right make sure you're you know it recovers fast enough take a look at it videotape your arrow with your phone do the slow-mo videotape it and get on a little angle behind you so they can see the flight of the arrow and see how it goes if you're having little erraticacies erratic flight i guess you call it erraticacies. that's a new word i guess um stuff like that all right um make sure that you get that stuff under control um steve Ranella just did a thing on archer's paradox um that's a good good um podcast to listen to he's very funny he's a lot more funnier than i am i'm not that funny funny looking but not that funny um but he did something about an archer's paradox and what it is it's basically the recovery of your arrow how fast or slow your bow your arrow is going to recover and um you change your spine changes that how much it bends okay uh so you want to watch that if it's bending right or left or on different it's not bending just up or down on a compound bow you want to look into your spine strength right there okay it should go up and down a little bit and then level out because it's taking the energy and it's shooting it just like a javelin in the olympics okay same thing it moves a little bit but then it it, the right spine will let it just sail okay and it's a beautiful arrow when it does sometimes you got to cut the arrow a little bit sometimes you got to you know what your weight is on the front you know because your archer's paradox is really with the spine and your spine can be adjusted by the length of the arrow tip weight stuff like that okay all right so pretty much that's what i wanted to talk about today on this labor day uh, i got it out in like 30 minutes something like that 40 minutes i don't know what it was but uh wasn't crazy funny today we're not doing a whole lot of laughing because it's very important for you guys getting ready for hunting season to get your broadheads done and i've been getting tons of questions and what should i do next what should i do next well this is what you're supposed to do next so tell your friends tell your parents tell your girlfriend tell your wife listen to my podcast like my podcast subscribe to my podcast go right to the youtube do all that stuff so i know you guys are listening uh i love the emails even though if you're calling me an asshole i'm good with it <laughs> i pretty much am so um you guys enjoy have a safe hunting season you're going to hear from me probably a couple times before the season starts and that's within a couple of weeks because we got some other things to talk about 
Um, GPS is being one of them. You guys got to learn your GPSs and use your binos. Another thing is wash your hands. Let's get out of this crazy pandemic, man. I know the masks are pain in the ash, but I don't know, wear them where they tell you, okay? Don't spit on each other and wash your hands, especially if you touch anything. Don't touch anything. And touch your face. Touch anything else. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so this is Bob from Chicago Archery to the Point, C-A-T-O-T-H-E-P-O-I-N-T. Chicago Archery's to the Point on YouTube. Subscribe, love us. And uh, I will be seeing you soon. Peace out. Nope. There we go.